Welcome to Mojo Grip, Mike here. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today we're flying the sports cruiser. As some of you may already know, I was recently down in Sebastian, Florida to check out the cruiser aircraft. And today we get to see it fly. Guys, today's video is sponsored by Wingswap.com. If you're not familiar with Wingswap, it's a really cool marketplace to sell and buy your next airplane. As some of you already know, I've been looking to buy my own airplane for the last couple of months, and usually I'm tearing around Barnstormer.com or trade a plane, and a lot of times when I'm browsing through Barnstormers, I have to go through so many different cuts and pages on the website just to find specifically what I need. With Wingswap, it's a piece of cake. The best feature for me on this site is the fact that I can narrow down my search based on the make, the model, the year, the specific airplane that I want. And that's what's got me using this site almost every night to look for my airplane. So if you're looking to sell your airplane or you're in the same boat as I am, you're looking for your very first airplane to purchase, definitely check out wingswap.com. Now a personal secret that a lot of people don't know is that I'm actually a little nervous, kind of shell shocked to fly this airplane because years ago when I used to dream about becoming a pilot, I would watch endless videos of the sports cruiser. So flying it today is like a dream come true. So first then, the cabin width. As you see, it's two of us in there, myself and Josh, and I can tell you that I had enough room. I didn't feel claustrophobic. I didn't feel too tight in there. There was enough shoulder room for both of us. And I'm not, I'm not the biggest person neither as Josh, so maybe different sized people might experience some tightness. But on this flight, it was very comfortable in the cabin. So the sports cruiser has a casting free nose wheel. Uh, what that means is that the nose moves freely and you can control it with the tow brakes or the rudder pedals in the airplane. So taxiing was fairly easy, very non-eventful. The run-up, uh, being someone that doesn't have a lot of time with the Rotax engine, I was actually really surprised that the run-up was familiar. Now on this flight day, it was fairly windy outside. Actually, it was really windy outside, which made me a little bit nervous uh, because as you know, light sport aircraft are notorious for having limitations when it comes to crosswind. But I can tell you that on our takeoff, we had a little bit of crosswind, but it was non-eventful. On the first takeoff, the sports cruiser takes off within a few hundred feet. And guys, I was seeing 800 to 1,000 feet per minute during our climb. Given it was quite cool outside, it wasn't a hot day. I'm sure on hotter days, you might see uh, lower climb rates. But on this day, two full grown men in the cockpit, this airplane climbs at a respectable rate. Now we climbed to about 2,500 feet, and then it was my turn to fly the airplane. Grabbing on the stick was very familiar, so was stepping on those rudder pedals. Uh, I practiced a few turns, as you see, and honestly, this, when you think of a modern airplane, this fits the bill, in the sense that during my turns, I barely used my rudder pedals, and the airplane stayed level during those turns. Now, I wasn't banking really hard, I wasn't doing any crazy steep turns, but on a normal turn, you have very little need to use your rudder pedals. That said, you should always train uh, to fly with your feet, always.
After practicing a few turns, decided to just have a straight level flight, see how fast this thing goes, fuel burn, all of that good stuff. So I put the power back to about 2400 RPM and I was seeing about 110 knots, true. You should also know that the sports cruiser stalls at only 31 knots. So this is an airplane that you can fly really slow. Visibility from the cockpit was very nice, uh, also familiar. Uh, being that I'm used to flying an airplane with a bubble canopy so I was very familiar with the type of visibility from the airplane. Again when it comes to behavior the sports cruiser remained very stable during our flight. My flight was between 2500 feet to 3000 feet and the airplane remained stable. Now I would say for me personally Having to work those electronically controlled trim tabs, uh, that would take some getting used to because I'm used to the hand uh, controlled ones where you just roll, 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 and roll. But with this, you have to press the button a few times to get your perfect trim. So that's gonna take some getting used to for me uh, personally. Now, let me take a moment and talk about this panel very quickly. In the sports cruiser, you get a dine and sky view uh, for your panel. And for someone who trained in a glass cockpit, Garmin, I trained with a G1000, which is a very superb panel. What you get with the sky view is a lot of features, same that you have in the G1000, but the first impression, or my first impression of the sky view is just the sharpness of the colors and pixelation on the screen. It's really sharp and modern. One thing I really liked about the primary display is that I have all of my flight information but also right at the bottom I have all of my engine data so I know what's going on with the engine as well I don't have to look at a second screen or look to my right to find out what's going on there literally you can put so much data in just one screen that's sitting right in front of you ADS-B and traffic detector in the sky view is also really nice and much needed safety feature you're able to see your traffic right on your screen and you're able to tell at what position that there are if they're moving towards you if they're flying away how high how low they are away from you all in all you're definitely going to appreciate all of the features that the Skyview has to offer On the way back to the airport, Josh took back the controls of the airplane and our descent was fairly easy. We looked out for traffic around the pattern and then we came in to touch down. The airplane landed in a fairly short distance, just like when you take off. Now in my early videos of the sports cruiser, I touched a little bit on who this airplane is for. People may tell you that a light sport aircraft is not a good cross country airplane, but with a cruise of 110 to 120 knots, this is a viable option for cross country flight. But also the sports cruiser can be used as a trainer. A lot of schools are already using them to train their students and the fact that your operating cost is much lower and you're flying a modern airplane. Pricing, the sports cruiser starts closer to $150,000. Uh, fully equipped, 
With all the premium features, you're looking at closer to $200,000. When it comes to the price, I think it's fairly priced with other light sports in the market. Now, price obviously would depend on who you talk to. Uh, there's a lot of critics about light sports being a little bit too expensive. But what you get with this airplane is modern features, great people around it but also you get a really good resale value. If you were to go online anywhere and you search for older models of the sports cruiser, you see that they're still selling at a premium price. Okay, let me know guys if you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. If this is your first time, please hit that subscribe button for me so you can get all of my future updates. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Mike and I will catch you on the next video.